Hey, what's up guys? DC Phil here. So today's video is actually super fun. I absolutely had a blast doing this one um, and it was fairly simple as well. Um, I actually ran across this video um, at random and I'm super glad I did because it was by far the most one of the most easiest projects I've done and the most adorable one, I must say. So without further ado, let me show you what the project is that we're going to be working on. So in my hands, I have the most adorable tiny little Easter basket. Um, this is actually constructed out of an empty duct tape roll. Super cute idea. And you're recycling, so you're able to make a super cute little project out of it as well. Um, in I have some little Easter eggs with some little um, gums at the bottom. You can put anything you want inside of these. I mean, obviously it's a duct tape roll, so it can't be anything ridiculously huge. Um, you can put absolutely anything, like any little candies, some little Easter eggs, and fill them with little treats or a little note maybe, um, or maybe even some money. Those are the best Easter eggs. Um, so this is one example of one that I did, and I absolutely went crazy doing them the fir very first time I tried it. Um, and as a matter of fact, this was my first one that I made. Um, and I think it came out pretty well for my first one. If you're familiar with this, you know that this is the duct tape fabric. And I actually, all three of them that I made were with the duct tape fabric. So let me show you the other two. So this is the second one. Super cute yellow with little white polka dots on it. Um, and again, inside two eggs with some little egg gums that are thrown at the bottom um, with obviously some little Easter grass down in there. And I was so excited to go out and get some grass because I hadn't purchased grass yet for Easter. So I was so excited to go out and purchase just for this project. And then the last one that I made was a pink, I don't know, background with white squares and like navy blue little polka dots all over it. Maybe they're not navy blue, maybe they're gray. I have no idea, I can't really see in this lighting. Um, but again, inside two little eggs with some gums in there. And I think these are so adorable and I can probably fit all of them in frame right now. And I have super tiny hands. So these are the Easter baskets that we're gonna be working on today. I hope you guys enjoy making these cute little delights and give these away um, for Easter to maybe your family or your friends. Um, I maybe have in mind giving these to some co-workers, so I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and get started with the supplies. Okay, so for the supplies that we're going to need, obviously we're going to need to start off with some duct tape. Um, these are the two patterns and colors that I'm choosing today. Um, this one's from Scotch, and it is the butterflies, and then this is one from Duck Brand, which is just the solid purple, um, and some clear tape. This is HD clear, you don't necessarily have to use this exact kind, as long as it's clear tape, that is perfect. So the next thing you're gonna need is an X-Acto knife. Um, you can use a box cutter as well, just be sure to be really careful. As well as a pair of scissors, I recommend using um, some non-stick scissors if you're working with duct tape, it makes it a little smoother to cut and the tape won't get stuck all over the scissors. The next thing you're going to need is a ruler, and this is to make sure that all of your edges are straight every single cut. Um, and for this one, it's just basically a few cuts here and there um, that are going to need to be straight. The next thing you're going to need are some pipe cleaners. In this case, they're called fuzzy sticks. Um, and these are going to be basically um, just whatever you you're going to want your handle to be. This is what we're going to use for the handles. Um, so for instance, all of my handles so far that I've done are all white. I'm actually mixing that up today and going to do a purple one to fit my purple theme. So hopefully whomever this goes to likes the color purple. So the next thing you're going to need is a sheet of paper or some cardstock. Um, it would be better if you used cardstock. However, I don't have any right now. Um, and again, it's not going to hold anything really heavy. So you're not going to really need that stability to hold anything, to withhold anything that's going to be heavy in there. Um, aside from that, it is going to be covered with duct tape on both sides. And the three that I made prior were all made with the same notebook paper that it is showing right now. Like I said, it doesn't really need that durability on the bottom because it's not going to really be holding anything too heavy in there for it to break through. And of course, the last thing that you're going to need is obviously some empty duct tape rolls. And this is basically going to be what the basket itself is constructed of. 
So not only are you able to make a really cute, awesome little project, you're also recycling, which is perfect. And then of course, to fill it, you're going to need some grass, some Easter eggs, and of course, some type of sweets that are going to be mighty delicious. In this case, it is double bubble eggs, egg-shaped bubble gum. Um, double bubble is delicious, so I couldn't go wrong, and I purchased this. Like I said before, you can choose to fill your baskets with anything else you please, and this doesn't necessarily have to be for Easter. You can make these for um, birthday parties, let's say. If you're having a themed birthday party, you can make these and give them away as party favors. You can also give these away for Christmas and make it you know really decorative with Christmas designs on there and the Christmas uh, duct tape prints you can go absolutely wild with these which is so amazing so now that we know all of the supplies that we're going to need let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial the first thing that we're going to do is grab our empty roll of duct tape um, this is going to be the easiest way that we can do this let's find this and here it is and what I like to do is when I rip this off you're going to completely rip all of that off so that the cardboard of the roll is showing and then it'll just rip off to that edge right there and if not you can help it a little bit it looks like it started ripping up my cardboard a little bit more which is okay because it's going to get covered anyways and if this happens you can just chop that piece off i don't know if that went flying at you guys so now that we've taken this strip of tape with that cardboard on the back off of the roll, let's go ahead and set that strip aside. We will be using that as a reference later on. Um, so for this right now, what we're going to do is grab our color on the inside because we're going to want to cover up that inside there so it doesn't show the label. So to do that, what we're going to do here is get a strip of our inside color whatever you're going to want that to be. And I know this is roughly 10 inches long. However, that's the outside of the roll, so the inside is going to be a little smaller. Um, so I'm just going to guesstimate right now. I don't really remember my exact measurements before, but I'm just going to guesstimate. So I'll go ahead and cut it 9 and 3 quarters. And if anything, we can just cut down from there. I'll set that off to the side. Okay, so you're going to have two strips of tape that are nine and three fourths quarter inches long. You're going to cut one of those strips in half lengthwise. Once you cut it in half, you're only going to need one of those strips. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to line it so it's two and a half inches tall. So let me use this end. So what I like to do is I like to go to the two and a half inch mark and then press downwards. Okay, I lift it up. The easiest way for me to do this is to just start by doing it with one end. Let me make sure my tape is going to function with me right now. Um, and I'll just start, like I said, with one end of the strip that I just cut out and just roughly guesstimate on each end that they're fairly even. It doesn't have to be completely even because it's going to end up getting covered up anyways. But it makes it easier when you're applying. So once you have that piece in there like that, it's pretty much all downhill from here. It gets a little simple so you just use your fingers and press on the inside making sure that it stays, you know, nice and oh, nice and secure in there and as you're pushing the tape down make sure you're pushing down those creases that may be um, getting caused in there and then once it's working itself in there you can see that the other piece of tape will end up going in also
And then what I like to do is I like to lift up where there are any air bubbles and then just tightly pull upwards. And this gets those air bubbles out of there. And then flip it around and do the same thing. So after you have your duct tape covered inside, the next thing you're going to want to do is just cut some slits all the way around this. And then flip it around and do the same exact thing to this side. Okay, once you have all of those tabs cut out, you're going to pull and then press downwards. And then just continue that all the way around on both top and bottom. Once you have pulled all of the taps all the way around on the top and the bottom, um, what you're going to want to do next is grab your sheet of paper or your cardstock, whatever you're deciding to use. Um, put your cylinder thing on top of here and then just trace that circle onto the paper. And I just made a random line, but it's okay. Grab your scissors and then just cut around the circle. Once that is cut out, what you're going to want to do is grab your inside color and place it directly on top of the circle, making sure that the tape is going above the circle. So you're basically just wanting to make sure that there's um, some sticky on the outside of the circle. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be a certain amount as long as it's just covering it. Again, making sure that the bottom's completely covered as well. What we're going to do is flip this over. This is where the nonstick scissors come in handy. And you're just going to, again, cut around that paper circle that you cut out. Okay, so what you're going to want to do next, now that that is completely covered, is grab your outside color and do the same thing. However, this time you want to make sure that there is a good amount of sticky on both top and bottom and the sides. And I know it's a circle and it doesn't have top, bottoms, or sides, but you know what I mean. Make sure that they're sticky all around it. Okay, this time instead of cutting around the circle, what I'm going to do is just kind of cut around the corners here, you know, just cutting it down a little smaller and rounding those corners off kind of, and it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but as long as it's just cut down a smidge. So as you can see here, I only have a little bit of adhesive um, on this side. Um, it may become a problem later, but as of right now, I know, I know of a way that I'm going to fix that, and I will point it out later on when I get to that. So what we're going to do is you can look to see which side looks the best. I think this one does, so I'm going to put this one on top. 
just simply line that bottom circle up with the tube and all you're going to do is just get your blade and just cut some slits throughout the sticky there at the bottom. And if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can just start applying this as you go. And I know you can't really see what I'm doing. Let me see if I can turn it that way. So you cut all of those slits basically the same way you did that up there. And you're going to do the same exact thing. Just pull upwards and continue that all the way around. And the reason I start pulling the this side up is so that way it stays in place so when I continue the rest of the way I won't have any issues with it not wanting to stay. After you've put in your bottom, um, what you're going to do next is grab your pipe cleaner, whatever color you're wanting, um, get that and your clear tape. I know you won't really be able to see what I'm cutting here, but it doesn't have to be too precise. Um, you're just basically going to cut two four inch, I'm sorry to two inch strips of tape and again it doesn't have to be precise and what you're going to do is line up this clear tape with the bottom of the pipe cleaner and it's going to move a lot at first because it's kind of fuzzy so you're just going to get it where you want and then just flatten that down. And this is where I said I'm going to fix that problem where it was super thin down there. So to ensure that that's not going to come up later on, I'm going to place this on that side. And you're basically just lining the pipe cleaner and that strip of tape up to the bottom. strip of tape may be a smidge big so you're just going to want to trim if you need to. Flatten that down completely and then your other piece and I'm going to go ahead and trim a piece off already since I know it's going to be a smidge long. Okay, put that piece of tape the same exact way right in the middle and then just smash it down and you know what to do I'm sure. Just go to the other side, make sure it's even and then place that piece of tape down. Okay, there's that. Almost done. Move that piece of tape out of my way. So the very last thing we're gonna do to complete this basket is grab that piece of tape that we cut off of the roll initially and we're gonna measure it it's roughly 10 and a half inches. So we're going to grab our outside color. And we're going to measure 10 and a half inches. 
I'll grab this just as a reference guide. So once you've cut your 10 and a half strip of tape, what you're going to want to do next is lift that up. And what I typically like to do is start from one of the sides where the pipe cleaner starts from that first slit that you made and lining it up with the top and the bottom. Take your time doing this. There's no rush. Pull as you go and then just wrap it all the way around. So there's your little Easter basket. So now we're ready to fill the Easter basket with grass. And what I like to do, since it is a little difficult for the grass to stay in there, is with my fingers I will just kind of curl it up into a ball inside of the cup. And it still forms a nice little bed for it to rest in. Then I'll drop some Easter eggs in there. Drop another one. Maybe we'll put another one back here to make it a little fuller. And you can just kind of play around with this. You can get some candies and just kind of toss them in there. It's funny that these are really matching. Maybe throw some on the bottom there. Hide them. Have fun with them. Eat it while you play with it. Make it look good. Yes, I just shoved one of these huge pieces of gum in my mouth. Double bubble. Mmm. Man, that is delicious. So, this is the final product. And I put a light on just because my lighting has been horrible this whole time. I apologize. Um, yeah, this is the final product. Like I said, the purple pipe cleaner, which connects at the bottom um, it connects on the sides and down at the bottom and then let me see if I can do this the bottom that is secured and then the inside it has all of its little grass I just dropped all of the eggs but it has the grass in there with the candy and then the bottom down there of course is secured as well there we go so that's it I dropped some of my eggs another one right there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if I didn't mention before, I did get this idea from a fellow duct taper. Um, I don't remember her YouTube name, but I do know that her Instagram name is Undead Corpse. I will go ahead and leave um, her links down below. Uh, she did make this tutorial and I saw it, so I went ahead and I recreated it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and Go make sure you head over to Undead Corpse, follow her on Instagram, and be sure to check her out on YouTube as well and subscribe to her. Um, let her know DC Phil sent you. That'll be nice. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's pretty much it. There's all the rest of my little baskets. I am absolutely in love with these. Let me move my angle a little bit. There you go. I'll zoom out. Oh, that's in. Please excuse my workspace. It's a little bit messy right now. There we go. So, yep. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget, as always, comment, rate, and subscribe.
please share with all of your family and friends. Be safe out there. Love you all. You're wonderful. Have an awesome, amazing day.